Toolset Conditional is an extremely powerful block where you set up a set of conditions that must be true or false for something to happen. A great example is in a website where people may or may not upload a user picture. When you go to show all the users, you don't want blank space to show, so you set up a condition. If there is a picture, then show it. If there's no picture, then show something else like a generic picture. Let's build this from scratch and along the way show you some possible uses. For our first example, let's say we want editors and authors of a website to see a message. For now, we'll just start a new page, but you can put this block pretty much anywhere. Static pages, templates, views, posts, archives, wherever. Next, let's add the toolset conditional block. And add a new condition. This first drop-down on the left is a list of possibilities of what we can check. I'm going to select Current User Role. Notice that underneath, you get helpful tips as to what each option does. In this case, it says that the field returns the role slug of the logged-in user. On the right, since we know what roles we want to check for, we'll select Other Role. And the value we'll put in is Editor. We also want to check for authors, so we see a plus symbol over here. Let's select it and add another condition. Again, we're checking the current user role. If it's equal to the value of author. Now over to the left, we see this and or. Right now, the current logged in user would have to be an editor and author, which is impossible. So this would never give a true answer. Instead, let's switch this to OR. Now, if the logged in user is either an editor or an author, in either case, it would be true. OK, let's hit Apply. And now we have what is basically a container block. But whatever is in this container will only run if the conditions we set are true. Notice there is even a helper on the right-hand panel which reminds us of what conditions were set. OK, let's add a little text here. I'll add a paragraph block and type, this might be a hidden message. We could continue and add anything you want in here. Any kind of block, a view, really anything you want. We'll save the page and view it. And there's no message. Why? Well, I'm signed in as an administrator and the message was on for editors and authors. Let's go back and make an adjustment. Using that right-hand panel, we'll click on Edit. Everything is exactly as we set it, but let's flip it around. On the left-hand side, under the AND and OR setting, there's a setting for NOT. Flipping that switch, we are now NOT looking for editors and authors. Or a better way of saying it is, if the result of this operation is not an editor or an author, then show what's in the container. Let's hit Apply, update the page, and check it in front. And there you go. The message is seen by administrators, subscribers, and guests, since we inverted the logic. While putting together a website, you might wish to test for empty fields especially when users input their own data. And they may or may not have filled everything out. When you go back to display their data, it would be strange if there's a title but no paragraph. Or, as I mentioned earlier, a space for a picture but no picture. On the Toolset Demo Gyms and Trainers website, the trainers have images. But what if this trainer didn't? First, let's delete this picture of the trainer. Now, let's hop over and see our list of trainers. And, as we expect, this one is missing a picture, and it looks really bad. So, let's make it nicer. We'll jump over to the archive that displays the trainers, and we find this current image block. Let's add another block underneath. And we'll add the toolset conditional block. Because the trainer photo is a custom field, we're going to look at post data for the current post, and the source in this case is the field group for personal trainers. And we want to see if there's a trainer photo. And then in the middle, 
What we're looking for is all the way at the bottom. We want to see if there's an empty value. And we'll pick the not button. So what we're saying is if this image is not empty, then run whatever is contained. OK, we'll apply. And on the main page, let's just drag and drop the dynamic image block that was already there inside the conditional block. As a side note, the way to drag and drop is to click and hold on the arrow button and then drag. OK, just a quick check on our navigator to make sure it's correct. Yes, the image is inside of the conditional. That's what we want. Let's now create a second condition. We can just use the buttons and duplicate our first setup. And now we'll go in and switch off the NOT button. This time, we actually want to see if this field is empty. And if it is, we'll put a different picture there. So let's hit Apply. Back on the main screen, in our new conditions container, let's change this to a static image. And let's pick the big G symbol as a generic picture for this site. OK, let's save this and see what it looks like. And it's working. Anytime a user didn't upload a picture, the site won't look broken. For this next example, I'm going to hop over to the toolset demonstration site, Cooking Made Simple. So right now, there's a taxonomy for each post. In this case, it says Beginner. But wouldn't it be great to be able to check for taxonomy and display something different for each? Maybe for beginners, we want to display an ad for a special class or a coupon offering. I'm going to go into the content template for recipes. If I click on the word beginner here, we see on the side panel that this is a post taxonomy called levels of difficulty. So that's what we're going to look for even if it wasn't displayed on this post. I'll add a toolset condition block and raise it to the top of the page. Adding a new condition, we want the post data for the current post. And now we're looking for the post's taxonomies. Here it is, which contextually opens up to levels of difficulty, which is what we want. It even reminds us underneath that we'll be using slugs. In the middle dropdown, we want it to contain a static value. And we'll type in the value we're looking for. In this case, the slug is called beginner. And hit apply. Now, we could go make a fancy Photoshop picture, but for now, I'll just use the toolset button block. And in it, I'll write limited offer 50% off of beginner classes. Now, of course, we'd add a link here to a page with our offering, but I'll skip that for now. I can't help myself. Let's quickly style the background color to be red. Okay, we'll save everything and look on the front of the site. And there it is. We could work on it further, like playing with its position, but moving on for now. If I go to a more advanced lesson, you see, it's not there, which is good. Because why would we offer beginner classes to an advanced chef? If you want, you could put a different conditional here, selling classes to advanced chefs. Let's go back into the conditional to show you something else that's very cool. Dates. I'll add another condition. Choose date function. We'll check if today is less than or equal to another date function of a custom date. And I'll type in a date that's two weeks from now and hit apply. So to us, this banner button is displayed, but it's a limited time offer and will be automatically removed in two weeks. Another way to do this is with the toolset countdown block, but I wanted to show you how it would work with a toolset conditional. Wrapping this up, I just want to pop into the conditions screen one more time to show you around a bit more. Looking at our first dropdown, you can search by static values, user IDs, and even custom functions and shortcodes. And you might have noticed earlier, but when you hit the plus button to add more conditions, you have the option for groups of conditions. This is a really powerful feature for when you need it. 
Lastly, on the upper right is an advanced tab. This is for you programmers out there who want to do it all by hand. Okay, that wraps it up. Conditions brings you a lot of power that can add tons of logic to your websites.